Okay, so we're gonna talk about poison-related suicide. So, uh, sa konsepto ng suicide kasi it's actually a spectrum. Pag pinag-usapan natin ng suicide is that hindi natin siya pwedeng i-ano i- lang that, uh, uh, kasi dalawa lang alam natin konsepto sa suicide. The first concept we know with suicide is the suicide itself. It's the, uh, kung pag-uusapan natin ang, ang legalities of suicide is that it's the consummation of self inflicted injuries that, that resulted to death. Diba? So basically, yun yung gist niya. And then there's the suicide attempt, which is the frustrated type of suicide. Na hindi, hindi nag-result sa pagkamatay. Pero in studies, it suggests that it's a spectrum. Meaning, meron siyang uh, hindi lang yun yung dalawa. Kasi meron tayong tinatawag na suicidal ideation. Ibig sabihin, iniisip na natin ang pagpapakamatay. And then there is suicide intent without plan and suicide intent without plan. Uh, nasa top level ang suicide kasi ito yung consummation talaga. Then sumusunod yung suicide attempt. Then there's the suicide intent. Kung baga, meron na siyang kagustuhan magpakamatay pero with plan. Meaning meron na siyang plano. Bibili ako ng muriatic acid sa ganitong tindahan. Uh, kukunin ko yung baril ng aking pinsan, ng aking kapatid, ng aking tatay. Uh, bibili ako ng ganitong lubid. Itatali ko to sa ganitong part ng bahay ko. So basically, that's the crime, uh, that is suicide intent with, uh, with the plan. Pero meron din kasi tayo tinatawag na suicide intent without plan or tinatawag natin passive suicidal ideation. Pag sinabi natin kasi ganun, ibig sabihin, parang wala pa siya talagang plano pero meron na siyang kagustuhan mamatay. Okay? And then finally, may mga tinatawag tayo suicidal ideation na talaga. Parang gusto ko pa mamatay pero wala kang plano. Wala talagang nangyayari. Wala naman siyang ginagawang ano pero yun. Di ba may mga ganun tayo na ganun tayo minsan bukang bibig lalo sa ibang tao na ay no, mas better na patay na lang ako. Diba? So it's it's a way of understanding that suicide is a spectrum. It's a behavior. It's a suicide behavior that we cannot um, enclose it into us to a, a conceptual space na very limited. Kasi iba-iba ang motivation ng tao on how they will commit it. So la, now we will proceed on on this idea. Okay? Okay. Uh, as a part of the... United Nations goal for sustainable uh, sustainable development po, or the SDG. Oh, I hopefully familiar po kayo dito. We have a set of I think it's 16 or 20 20 sustainable development goals that we need to achieve by the year 2030. Ito yung nag-supersede dun sa 2015 Millennium Development Goal. So as a part of the develop uh, of the goal number 3 of good health and well-being, goal 342 uh, by year 2030, there is a reduction of one-third pre- of premature mortality or death from non-communicable diseases through prevention and treatment and promotion of men- mental health and well-being. So, sinasabi dito, by year 2030, dapat there's a reduction of at least one-third of premature death resulting from suicide. And an indicator po nito is suicide mortality rate. Okay. So, in the world, according to WHO, is there one person that dies every four seconds in the world due to suicide? Okay? Si Pinyon, every first, uh, 40 seconds na pag-uusap natin ito, may isa pong namatay. And then, in every one suicide, there is 20 more suicide attempts that happens in the world. So, ito yung sinubukan na talaga nila. And then finally, in every suicide attempts, there are more suicidal ideation that happens every day to everyone, to any people in the world. So just the magnitude itself, doon pa lang, nakikita na natin yung magnitude, di ba? So, for the WHO, more than 700,000 die by suicide each year. Hindi pa nila specify kung ano-ano yung mga dahilan. Okay. And 75% of those suicides are from the low to middle income countries. And makikita nyo po dito sa report na ito, or actually this is a 2012 report, mas mataas pa po ito ng 2012. So 800,000 uh, 800, total suicides all throughout the year. So pansin nyo po na ang taas talaga 
ng uh, report uh, ng nare-report sa low to middle income pa- countries natin. At uh, chunks talaga siya na ano uh, na kanilang uh, suicide of, uh, uh, the epidemiology of the suicide of the world. Okay? Male to female ratio uh, sa Philippines uh, yung pag ano po natin dito meaning for for above 4.0 ibig sabihin mas marami pong lalaki ang nagpapakamatay versus babae. Pansin niyo po si Philippines. Si Philippines po is katabin. Ayan. So, papansin po natin dito that kulang-kula siya. So, in the Philippines, it's men who commit suicide. Uh, uh, men is having suicide. Pero, it's a, a false notion po ha. Hindi po natin pansin sabihin laki lang ang nagpapakamatay. It just happens to be that men consummates it. Pero equal po sila. Ang mga attempts po is pareho, equal. It just happens to be na mas violent ang suicide modality ng lalaki. Mas violent yung kanila kaya mas nagre-result sa death. They either use hanging or they used uh, guns, knives. Compared to women na mas gumagamit sila na overdosing sa drugs or na medications nila, overdosing or gumagamit sila ng mga certain substances na may potentially kaya nila mag-survive. Ayan na. So it it just only says that it doesn't, uh, sinasabi lang dito na hindi lalaki, na lalaki ang nagpapakamatay kasi it's a false notion. It's a myth actually na lalaki lang nagpapakamatay. It's just to be happy that mas mat, mas ma Ma, yung means ng pagpapakamatay nila is mas violent compare sa women. Okay, so mapapansin po natin dito that by age group, yung male to female ratio, papansin natin talagang prevalent siya na mas maraming nagko-consummit or tapos ang ano, uh, talagang nako-consummit ang suicide attempt among male in in all in all of the age groups. Pero hindi sinasabi nito na uh, tawag dito na ano sila it just happens to be again that men commit uh, nakoconsummate yung kanilang suicide over versus the women na sa same population okay now uh, one in five of suicide is caused by pesticide okay ibig sabihin uh, around 20% of all suicide deaths resulted had come from pesticides uh, a majority of uh, cases Actually, of suicide is more onto the trauma, like self-inflicted harm, like self-directed wounds, like gun- self-directed gunshot wounds, stab wounds, yung mga ganun. Or yung paglalas-las, yan, uh, self, uh, uh, yan, yung mga ganun bagay. So majority talaga, kasi yun kasi madaling makakuha. Diba? For example, kung kuchilyo, merong available. Kung may lubid, merong kang available. Uh, compared kasi sa pesticides or other means of substances, kailangan mo muna siya ma-acquire before mo magamit. Unfortunately, sa rural and low, mid, uh, low to middle income countries, it's mas mataas siya. For example, in cases of India, Sri Lanka, and other agricultural, ag- agricultural countries, mas mataas yung pesticide. Why? Kasi yun yung available sa kanila. So, it's a notion that what is available to them is the is their mood of their suicide so kung uh, kung syempre alang lang si magsasaka maghanap ng baril para pamatay pero in in reality ang gagamitin niya syempre kung ano yung available sa kanya which is the pesticide kasi yun ang ginagamit niya Ayan. so in here mapapansin po natin in year 2021 that the top 10 agents both in patients and telephone referrals of the Philippine General Hospital uh, National Poison Management Control Center is this the following okay we have uh, received this following ano for pedia and adults okay uh, kaya ko po siya sino show yung mga data na to na uh, ibig sabihin available po siya in in social media and other open open space platform so makikita niyo po siya at mababalidate niyo po siya sa mga sites na yan so it ranks that uh, sa uh, pedia nagra-rank tayo sa paracetamol, rubbing alcohol, ethanol, sodium hypochlorite sa kids, tapos snake bite, kerosene, clonazepam and okay sa kids kasi sa mga pedia Papansin natin dito is that ano yan, chunks of their cases <clears throat> is resulted from self a uh, deliberate self-harm like 
overdosing yung paracetamol, yan, uh, sodium hypochlorite, pero mas lessen yun sa kanila. Kaya papapansin nyo po sa kanila, your organophosphate, your hydrochloric acid, medyo nasa mababang range siya, nasa top 10, top 6 pa baba. Yung paracetamol medyo ano yan, uh, confounding kasi halo yan. Yung iba dyan nag-overdose, yung iba dyan mali talaga lang yung nabigay na dose sa kanila. Ayan. Pero yung mga nasa baba, yung uh, organophosphate, organic hydrochloric acid, or all men, yan is, ang chunks niyan is majority to youth. Meaning, you those ages 12, uh, adolescent period, from 12 to 18 years old. So, ayan. So, somehow, it's, uh, it's, tawag dito, uh, uh, disturbing na ma, ma reality na humahabol yung cases ng pedya. Kasi, in reality, ang mga bata, hindi naman nila may isipin magpakamatay unless otherwise, mabigat yung pinagdadaanan nila. Ayan. At majority ng mga matinding na pinagdadaanan is usually na sa adolescent period or to the pubescent period na talaga. And then, sa adults, ayun papansin nyo na yung nasa top, yung top, nasa top natin, 1 to 5, are all, ano yan, because it happens of your, tag dito, uh, nangyari yan because of deliberate self-harm. Yun po yung main difference with pediatric cases and adult patients. Okay? Uh, mas mataas po yung cases namin sa poisoning pagdating sa aspeto ng deliberate self-harm among adults. Uh, from adolescent to among adults. Ganun, at ganun po siya kalala. Also, note, tignan nyo po. Uh, hindi ko lang po mapakita yung ibang data. Pero from year 2019, uh, 2018, 2019, 2017, 2018, 2019, wala po ang rubbing alcohol sa listahang ito. Yan. Kaya usually sinasama namin yung rubbing alcohol sa ethanol. Pero dahil po sa ano, pinaghiwalay po yan. Ngayon yung rubbing alcohol ay may sarili na po siyang kategory or sarili na siyang ano. Kasi ginagamit na rin po sa deliberate self-harm ang uh, rubbing alcohol po natin. Kasi yun po yung available. Kasi uh, siyempre, di ba, ini-encourage po ng, natin na, ng, double, uh, ng Department of Health that we should at least wash our hands with water. Pero kung walang available, you can use rubbing alcohol. So, by that point, marami pong mga nagda-deliberate self-harm using rubbing alcohol. Ayan po. Also, kaya po makikita nyo po dyan yung mga sodium hypochlorite uh, available. Uh, kasi available sa kanila. Sodium hypochlorite is your bleach or your... Uh, Ayoko magsabi ng brand. Pero para po malinaw yung mga Zonrox, Clorox, yun. So, yun yung mga ano natin. And then, your hydrochloric acid is your muriatic acid. Yan. So, yun yung mga madalas na ginagamit po nila to, to uh, uh, commit the deliberate self-harm. Pero hindi naman po namin in, ano, note dito yung mga nagre-result sa death. Pero marami-dami rin din po, po na, ano, na nagre-result sa death due to the deliberate self-harm po. Pero usually, kapag nag-deliberate self-harm po na nag-result sa death, it happens due to pe pesticides na nagamit. Ibig sabihin, pag sinabi po kasi natin pesticides, it's not necessarily just used for, for the farming. Ginagamit din po siya for, let's say, example, uh, pest, uh, pest control ng mga, uh, dito, ng mga daga, both in the field at saka ano. Kasi highly toxic din po yung mga nagagamit po nila doon. Ayun po. So, uh, just, a, uh, just a point. Meron po talaga significant difference and among adults it's the most common uh, mode of poisoning is the deliberate self harm or the intent to to harm his or her own self using this kind of poison. Okay, what are the risk factors associated with suicide? Ang ma ma major major sorry, ang major po nating risk factor is the pre previous suicide attempt. So if you ask a person who committed or, or had an intent of uh, harming him or herself, you must ask, ginawa mo na ba ito dati? It's either documented, ibig sabihin na dala pa siya sa hospital uh, or merong nagkaroon ng treatment, etc. Or nasabi niya sa ibang tao or hindi. Pero minsan, hindi nila sinasabi. Pero somehow, nag-attempt na sila. So you need to ask it as well. Alam po ba, alam ba ito na mga ano? So yun. Another thing is your mental disorder. Uh, pinaghiwalay po, ang, under po ng substance use disorder is your mental disorder. Pero for this purpose, pinaghiwalay po sila. Okay. Uh, just an, uh, ask ko lang po ulit. By raise of hand, baba po na lang natin yung iba. Sige. By raise of hand, uh, 
lahat po ba ng mental disorder can commit suicide? Natakot kaya ata, sir, mag-raise ng hands. <laughs> ah, yan po. Sige po. Ah, sige na po. Ayan na lang natin. Just uh, mental exercise. Um, lahat po ba ng mental disorder commits suicide? Okay, sir. So, so far, sir, nag-raise ng hands si Sergeant Nevado, Abra PMDU, EPD. Yan, tatlo. Tatlo pa lang. So, ang question, sir, is lahat ba ng uh, may mental disorder ay may suicide ideation? Tama ba, sir? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Lahat ba ng may mental disorder commit suicide? Yeah. So, dalawa. Nabawasan na isa. Mga ba si uh, Abra? Oh, sabi naman ni Lieutenant Colonel... Uh, hindi ko na nakita. Sorry. Okay. May nagnonote sila. Nagnonote po. Ayan. Okay na yan. Sige, sir. Okay. The answer is no. Not everyone can... Not all people who had mental disorder can commit suicide. Okay po. Primarily, yes, it happens to mood disorders like your major depressive disorder, your uh, bipolar disorder. Nangyayari siya. Kasi ano sila? Meron kasi silang judgment. Meron po silang cognitive abilities to actually plan it. Yun po. Kung ikaw po halimbawa ay may psychosis like schizophrenia, you cannot commit that. Okay po? Kung wala ka pong judgment, wala ka pong yung, yung hindi nag-work ang prefrontal cortex mo, you cannot. Kasi you need to plan it. So kung wala, kung hindi mo kaya magplano, malamang sa malamang, hindi ka makakakommit ng suicide. Yun po. Then, hiniwala po ang substance use disorder. Uh, uh, okay, ang substance use disorder somehow affects why? Kasi uh, substance use disorder is inescapable. Ang hirap po niya takasan. Okay? Na naging means na lang ang suicide as a way of escape for them. For example, an alcoholic, gusto niya nang huminto sa pag-take uh, pag ng alcohol pero somehow hindi niya magawa. Or someone who uses uh, your stimulants like methamphetamine or someone who uses your depressants such as your marijuana, etc. Gusto nila kumawala dun sa sistema. Dun sa sistema na buo na yun. Dun sa habit na yun. Pero somehow, hindi nila magawa. So how somehow, they need to escape from it. And the only way to escape from it is just killing themselves. Yan. Okay? Next is access to little means. Pag pinag-usapan natin dito, sa, kaya sabi ko po kanina, bakit bakit mga household things yung ginagamit sa pagpapakamatay? And not all of the cases is due to ano ha, due to firearms. It just happens to be na part siya. Like kutsilyo. Nung nasa trauma po ko, ay andalas-dalas po talaga ng kutsilyo na ginagamit po nila. Ayan. Uh, It, it, it cost na po talaga siya ng ganun na ano siya kasi yun yung available po sa kanila yun po yung nakikita ng mata nila yun yung kaya nilang gawa ng plan okay po so kung halimbawa po ay uh, tawag dito merong bleach iniisip niya iinom niya yung bleach kasi nakikita niya yung bleach kasi yun yung available sa kanya nabibili yun wala siyang restriction doon yung ganun po or available si muriatic acid available si available si tawag dito uh, yung iba pong cases nagpapakamatay because umiinom sila ng ano po nila na sarili nila antipsychotic antidepressants yun po yun yung means nila kasi yun yung available sa kanila so access to little means is a risk factor so kung aalisin mo yun mababa, mapapababa mo yung risk of uh, of committing suicide Then next, another risk factor is your social isolation. May mga cases po ko nito sa trauma dati na nagpakamatay siya because mag-isa lang siya sa buhay. Actually, uh, a part of protective, uh, no, na meron that, uh, protective factors, hindi ko kasi sinama po dito, pero as a part of protective factor, mas mababa po ang risk of committing suicide for those who are, meron, may social support. Actually, sila sabi doon na mas mababa nga ano eh, according to uh, to uh, large studies, yung may, yung mga single are more prone committing suicide compared to married ones. 
So ibig sabihin yung mga ano yung mga recently divorced, recently separated, yung mga separated, yung mga or those who are si- currently single, yung mga ganun po. It just happens to be na mas mataas yung sa kanila due to social isolation, yung mga ganun po. So they 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 somehow commit suicide for that matter. Okay, chronic disease and disability. Katulad po ng substance use disorder, they wanted an escape from their own ah uh, dito from their own suffering. Kaya yung iba dito nagkakaroon ng either nagde-develop na mental disorder like major depressive disorders. Ayan. So somehow kung ano nila or in chronic pain, gusto na nila talaga nila matapos yung pagdurusa nila. Somehow they commit suicide as well. A history of physical or sex and or sexual abuse. So being physically or sexually abused during child years, formative years during childhood, somehow affects you. Okay? So yung mga nabubuli sa school, na ano, kaya that's why some of them, nabagugulat ka na lang, ang bata-bata, 8-year-old, 10-year-old, nagkocommit ng suicide. Kasi during those formative years eh, yun. Then, another risk factor is a family history of suicide. If someone in your family committed it, so may chance or mas mataas yung chance na mag-commit din yung person na yun ng suicide. And of course, uh, exposure to traumatic events in adulthood. So those who experience, let's say, uh, violent death, your PTSD in uh, dun sa mga soldiers natin, yung mga, uh, yung mga de-develop ng post-traumatic stress disorder from... because of their exposure to war and disaster, yung mga ganun po. So kung ganun po, medyo mataas din po talaga ang, uh, dito, ang potentially na mag-commit sila ng suicide. Okay? So suicide attempts. So we need to distinguish yung suicide versus suicide attempts. So in suicide attempts, it poses a significant social and economic burden for communities due to the utilization of health services to, the, to treat the injury. Okay? Kasi dun sa suicide, isa na lang gagawin mo sa kanya. Ililibing mo na lang siya. Okay? Yes, meron siya productivity loss. Kasi nga, it happened to be that the person had resulted to, to the consummation of the act. Pero for this, ano, syempre, gaga, uh, itatakbo, itatakbo mo pa sa ospital yung tao. So, na, napahamak siya. Uh, napahamak kasi siya. Nagkaroon siya ng social and economic burden. Kailangan mo siya ipagamon. It's it's an imperative for us human beings for that. So, yung mga impact na yun is somehow uh, it burdens ang ating healthcare system. Na currently, mabigat na talaga yung pinagdadaanan ng healthcare system natin. Okay? Another, psychological and social impact of behavior to the person and to the family and community. Sabi ko nga po kanina, uh, a, a, a family history of suicide can increase the likelihood of suicide to an, an individual. So, kung yung bata or yung partner mo or yung ano has somehow or yung magulang mo is somehow na, naka-encounter nun, may tendency ka kasi mag-develop nun in the future. Magkakaroon ka ng psychological impact to you as a person. So, mabigat din yung pinagdadaanan ng mga ano eh, uh, ng mga tao nag-suicide attempt para dun sa mga tao sa pamilya at sa community nila. And then, long-term disability due to, due to the injury. Napaka-common nito pagdating po sa ano namin. Halimbawa, nag-take siya ng bleach, ng mga caustics like muriatic acid, bleach, yan. Uh, taas po yung tendency kasi niya na mag ng stricture sa esophagus ng pasyente. So, nin- liliit na yung ano niya. Forever na po siyang nakachube feeding. Forever na po siya. No? Eh kung magsara pa po yun, wala na po choice. Other way, it's either uh, ita transplant ng bagong esophagus or which is hindi naman ginagawa sa atin sa Pilipinas or ang gagawin na dyan is that lalagyan na lang siya ng tubing uh, na, dito, ng peg ng tubing sa ano sa stomach niya percutaneous uh, percutaneous gastrostomy so yun na lang yung magiging ano. so yung yung potential niya ng disability in eating yung gusto niya etc also yung mga nag yung mga naglalaslas Yan. So, lalo yung ano pinaka-memorable sa akin is that yung naglaslas ng leg niya. Ngayon, wala na siyang boses kasi tinamaan yung larynx niya. So, that's a long-term disability that resulted from an injury that resulted from suicide attempts. Okay. Next tayo. 
<clears throat> you know, uh, may mga mga strategies tayo yung pwede ni ating i-employ. Uh, divided siya usually sa tatlo, which is your universal strategies, then selective strategies, and your uh, uh, imperative strat- uh, indicated strategies. So we need to focus first the universal strategies. Ito kasi ginagawa natin sa buong population. Ibig sabihin, regardless of the individual, regardless of the ne- needs na ano niya, ito yung gagamitin talaga natin as an imperative baseline. So, designed to reach an entire population ang concept ng universal, uh, uh, universal strategies. So, usually, removing barriers to care and increasing the access to health. That's why meron po tayong dinedevelop ng mga access, uh, health lines. It's either uh, binibigay siya ng NGOs, binibigay siya ng, ng government offices natin like the, the Department of Health, and removing barriers to care. Halimbawa po, may nag-present sa emergency room. Hindi naman siya nagko-commit ng suicide. Hindi ba siya pwedeng tanggapin? Just because uh, yung burden ng healthcare natin is na doon. As much as possible, kailangan siyang tanggapin. Kasi what if mag-commit siya ng suicide, magiging pasyente na siya doon. Diba? So, we need to remove all those barriers in order for us to provide the optimal care. In order to prevent another incident of suicide. In order to, uh, to another incident of suicide attempt. Okay? And then, strengthening yung pro- protective processes natin, yung social support. Kailangan natin na maturuan ng mga tao that uh, ma-debunk yung mga certain myths, yung mga, mga, mga agam-agam sa kanilang ano, pagdating sa aspeto ng pagpapakamatay ng sarili. Okay? Uh, kailangan maintindihan ng society natin na it's a phenomenon that, that is happening and it is preventable. Okay? So, may, yun yung mga kailangan natin. Ano? At dapat, kung meron talaga sa pamilya na ganong suicide, may, may, suicide, may suicidality talaga, dapat open sa family yun. Kasi kailangan nilang maintindihan. Um, actually, there's a book uh, called the uh, ano, Perks of Being a Wallflower. Uh, it's a book that, uh, that's made into film. Actually, ang ganda nung ano nila doon pagdating sa suicide. Why? Yung family, aware sila doon sa suicide behavior nung isang family member nila. Na nung tumawag yung kapatid niya sa kanya, alam niyang magpapakamatay yung kapatid niya. Kaya nagpatawag siya agad ng police para mapuntahan yun sa bahay. Kasi alam niya hindi siya makakapunta on time. So, yung mga ganong bagay within the social support system natin, your friends, your families, should have at least an awareness on how to mitigate this, uh, this, uh, this uh, suicide behaviors. Okay? It's a struggle for them. They need, they need support. Okay? Hindi naman sila po magpapakamay ito nung walang dahilan. Ayan. Uh, uh, so, meron po mga certain motivations po tayo pag naging sa ganyan. Uh, also, altering the physical environment. Kung alam na po natin suicidal yung isang tao, alisin na natin lahat ng potential, potentially harmful sa kanya. Huwag na natin ipakita yung mga ano. Kaya po importante yung mga access eh. Yung mga access sa little means. Kung, gag, kung i-ano natin yun, tendency, baka ma- makonsumate niya kasi nga or ma- magawa niya yung behavior na yun kasi meron siyang availability. Meron na, na doon eh, present sa current environment eh, yung, yung system, yung, yung mga bagay na yun in order to, to commit suicide. Okay. Following is your selective strategies. Usually, this targets your uh, vulnerable population. Pag sinabi po natin for vulnerable population, these are your specific population groups. Like, for example, your adolescents, pubescents and adolescents. Yan. Iba yung way or iba yung strategies that we employ for these types of uh, uh, of this age group. Your LGBTQ, iba din po sa kanila. Uh, pagdating sa lesbian, gays, transsexual, uh, transsexuals, queers, etc. Iba din po yung approach natin sa kanila. Also, iba rin yung approach natin for the elderly. Uh, again, kahit po na mababa yung cases for the elderly, mataas, nagpapakamatay pa rin po sila. Some of them are because of regrets. Some of them because of, uh, uh, sabi nila na ano, yung, yung ano, pagkawalan na, na ng value sa buhay ng ibang tao. Yun. Parang ganun yung na- naramdaman nila that they committed suicide. So, iba din yung approach pa natin sa kanila. Ano pa ba? Ano pa ba? Ang mga other vulnerable groups, your women. Lalo yung mga abused women. So, iba din yung approach for them. Kasi, iba-iba yung mga pinagdaanan nila. So, therefore, they need at least a different approach on how we will need to address those needs. 
And then finally, uh, ito din po yung aspect to which prevention, aside from treatment, is yung specific ito sa particular group. So highly designed ito sa, uh, sa isang particular group at hindi mo siya pwedeng gamitin template sa isa't iba. It just happens na para lang ito dun sa particular group na yun. And then finally, your indicated strategies. This is highly specific for that individual. For example, target specific individuals within a vulnerable population. Uh, this is usually yung mga nagde-display ng early signs of suicide potentials and just yung sa mga nagkumita talaga ng suicide from before. So, ito yung isa, wala pa talaga, pero nagpapakita na ng sintomas. Pero yung isa, nagawa na niya. So, ang goal din ng indicated strategies na to, within the ano, uh, highly specified na ito pagdating dun sa mga tao, dun sa mga bata, halimbawa among adolescent, ito yung specific individual na ito. Binuo ko itong program na ito para sa kanya. Yun. Binuo ko itong strategies na ito para sa kanya. Okay? Mm -hmm. Kasi may mga cases halimbawa na nag-overlap ang mga vulnerable population group niya. Halimbawa, LGBTQ siya na under siya na uh, also na adolescent siya. Yung mga ganun. Or meron siyang sexual abuse na LGBTQ tapos adolescent din siya. So, you cannot enclose them in, in, in a container na may template lang sa bawat isa. You need at least a different approach from one of them or, or from each of them. Kasi iba-iba yung mga pangangailangan nila. Ayan. Okay. Ano pa ba yung mga relevant intervention natin? Re restriction to access to means. Uh, Pag-usapan natin yan. Ito yung aspeto na ako na i-remove mo lahat ng yung mga yun. Uh, bakit po ang taas-taas na <clears throat> tawag dito na firearm related suicide sa US. Actually, you sa buong mundo ngayon po according to studies, bumababa downtrend lahat ng ating suicide rates. US remains high. At ang taas-taas talaga ng consumption. Why? Because of their second amendment, which is their right to bear arms. Na hanggang ngayon na actually yun yung ano hindi naman yung uh, dito mas casualty firing yung ginagawa, naging problem nila talaga. It's the hidden behind it. It's the suicide related to firearms. Kasi ang taas ng access nila sa kanilang mga baril. They don't have background checks. They don't have actually to, uh, ano, at usually nabibili lang talaga online in the, in the convention conferences, mga firearm conferences, nabibili nila yon. So what resulted to that? So yung mga tao, mas lethal yung way of killing themselves that resulted to that difficulty. Kaya nila may, may, may pandemic, ay, may epidemic na ganun. Okay? So, kung ikaw ay nasa rural country, uh, total banning or uh, total banning of pesticides is actually a good thing. It's a cost-effective measure. Ibig sabihin, yung mga burden that resulted from uh, from the use of chemical products or pesticides that resulted to suicide deaths is much lesser or yung mga problem na the resulted from it is much lesser in comparison kung nagdevelop na sila okay so by removing that is a way of mitigating the issue okay next tayo is the policies to harm reduce harmful use of alcohol why alcohol okay alcohol is actually a depressant ang problem lang sa kanya ang una niyang dinedepress is your impulsivity ah your control your prefrontal cortex, actually. It's your judgment and your own. How I? Um, suicidality and the suicide behavior is actually seen as impulsive behavior. Oo. Uh, para siyang ibugso ng damdamin. Hindi na ako makataka sa mundo kong to. I need to kill myself. Ayun. So, majority of the time, ganun na nangyayari. It's the impulsivity. Kung i-remove mo yung yung re yung inhibition na yon magiging mas impulsive siya that will result to that will result to the suicide itself okay that's why there's a need to reduce yung mga ano na to uh, at dito uh, reduce yung mga harmful uh, harmful effects of alcohol pagdating sa ganito as well okay next access to healthcare so pag dito kailangan natin i-improve talaga kahit na so burden na yung ano, we need to, ano, kasi we need, uh, malaki kasi yung impact nun sa society natin na maraming namamatay just because of suicide. So, uh, eh, kaya, kaya pala siyang imitigate ng healthcare system natin. Kaya pala siyang imitigate ng simple uh, basic intervention. 
okay? And then also your mental health policies. With the improvement and with the passing of the Mental Health Act, is actually quite, becomes uh, suicidality and suicide behavior becomes relevant. It becomes uh, the hot topic of the, of the decade. Okay? Because they finally realized and after so many decades that uh, there's a need that for mental health preservation or mental health promotion lalo na po yung generation ngayon. Mapapansin niyo po yung mga Gen Z na no, na mga Gen Z na mga tao, mga bata, medyo mentally unprepared sila sa hamon ng mundo. So, medyo nahihirapan sila to cope up or their means of coping up is not actually helpful somehow. Pero just, just a base, ano lang sa ano ko po, ah, sa opinion and observation ko. I'm not, uh, uh, dito, generalizing everyone. It just happens to be na medyo hirap talaga to mga bata to na maka-adapt sa bagong mundo. Lalo na kung na after two years na isolate sila eh. Sila yung, Gen Z is the one that is isolated because of pandemic. Sila yung ano, na, 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 na tawag dito na, uh, lumi, uh, lumiit yung mundo nila. At ang tanging mundo na kilala nila is the available sa harapan nila, which is your devices. Pero iba pa rin kasi may meron ka social interaction. Yun. Iba pa rin na meron kang physical friendship. Meron ka pang ibang physical relationship sa ibang tao. Okay? Kasi yung proximity itself can help. And so that by that uh, aspect as uh, uh, by that those aspects pa lang do sa pag-uusapan natin sa konteksto ngayon. Ah, uh, ito yung mga relevant intervention generally na pwede nating i-apply uh, in the national level, in the institutional level the PNP. Kasi aminin natin, meron po talaga nagko-commit ng suicide within the PNP sir, and within the PNP organization and within their, your institution, and even us in Philippine General Hospital and other institutions within our, ano, meron po talaga nagko-commit at meron nakakapag-consummate. And it's a, it's a loss na unnecessary. So it's quite important na pwede natin itong i-implement din as well to institutional level. And actually, ito po yung ano, uh, nire-recommend the International Society of Chief of Police that is based in Toronto, na ito yung mga same, ano po, same uh, WHO recommendations po. So in reducing harmful of alcohol, nga, minimize your availability of alcohol, especially to adolescent. Kasi nga, para mamitigate natin yung impulsivity nila. Reducing access to pesticides primarily affects the rural agricultural areas. So by reducing it, hindi sila agad-agad makakapagpumil ng suicide. And reducing access and safe storage, kung nakikita yan, malamang magagawa siya. What if naman hindi talaga si farmer yung ano? What if si anak ng farmer ang gustong magano? So kung hindi niya nakikita at mahirap buksan, hindi niya magagamit. Then appropriate use and selling. Hindi lang basta benta ng benta tayo. So doon sa mga uh, nagbebenta ng agricultural products, tiba ang dali-dali bumili ng malatayon ngayon. Ang bilis, ang dali-dali bumili ng mga pang-pesticide natin. Like uh, racumin, yan. So ang dali niyan eh. So dapat appropriate use. Hindi dapat nag- yan din yung mga isang bagay na hindi dapat binebenta sa adolescent. Okay? Hindi siya dapat binebenta na ano. At saka dapat tinatanong para saan gagamitin. Hindi lang dapat nakabenta. And then optimization of medical management of self-poisoning. So, ayan. So, sa amin sa National Poison Management and Control Center, we actually improve that. We need to improve it. Ayan. So, it's uh, actually an integrated approach for for poisoning, self-poisoning cases. Uh, kasi uh, hindi namin probably ano, pero ang ano talaga nito, ang primarily na nag-tawag dito, nag, nag-co-conduct is the psychiatry department. Pero somehow dapat, it's a, as, as a nurse actually, uh, even beyond kasi it's a part of the nursing care. So we've, as a clinical toxicology nurse, it's a part of our nursing care as well. So it's a part of our medical management of our self, uh, uh, nursing management naman of self-poisoning. Access to pharmacologic agents. So restricting, restricting access and availability of medication used in suicide. Uh, okay. Uh, sa tingin niyo po, bakit gumagamit tayo ng blister pack? Actually, good practice po natin sa Pilipinas yun. Sadya lang talaga ang, ang daling niya matamper. Pero good practice siya sa Pilipinas. Why? Kasi sa blister pack, if you're committing suicide at gusto mong mag-overdose, ang hirap mag, magtanggal dun sa blister pack. Nakakapagod. 
So, after mong matanggal lahat, wala na yung motivation mo. Na wala na yung impulsivity. Yun. So, yun. So, isa yun sa mga aspect. So, at saka as well, yung mga ano dapat, hindi dapat easily available. Kaya nga dapat ino-audit ang gamot ng pasyente. Tama lang yung bilang na dapat na i-dispense sa kanya. Restricting the amount of dispense. Yun yung pag-uusapan ko ngayon. Then also, pharmacoeducation. Yung proper educating the ano na, ito ay para sa paggaling mo or dun sa pag-control ng mga sintomas mo. Hindi ito para dyan. So, dapat merong pharmacoeducative side yung pagtuturo natin pagdating sa mga aspeto in order to mitigate this this self-harm. And of course, your proper disposal and storage. Ang dami ko pong ganito na, na, ano, na dapat, halimbawa, natapos, uh, dapat kasi po, seven, di ba sa seven days na antibiotic, dapat walang maiiwan. Pero for some reason, meron sumusobra kasi may nakakalimot, nakakaligtaan. Tapos naiiwan siya sa medicine cabinet or dun sa lalagyanan. So ang tendency, hindi siya nadidispose, naiipon lang siya na naiipon. Unfortunately, kung ikaw ay suicidal at nakikita mo yon, ang tendency nung baka, mo, baka pwede mong kunin at gamitin mo as a means. So as much as possible, remove all those things. Kung hindi na kailangan sa bahay, itapon na. Okay? Proper disposal na tayo ng mga medications that can be used for self. Okay. So, I will present you a case. Actually, this is a case of a 16-year-old male that had taken, ang tawag niya, a vial of elixir. He bought ito a medicine man. Ang tawag niya sa man is apothecary. Kasi nga daw, yung girlfriend niya had recently died. Namatay yung girlfriend niya. Uh, for un, for no un, uh, for no uh, for unknown reason hindi niya nalaman kung bakit kasi tinatago sa kanya, sa family niya sa kanya nung pamilya ng babae yung um, ano bakit namatay yung babae yung girlfriend niya tapos pinuntahan niya yung yung girlfriend niya doon sa ano doon sa kung saan nakalaga or saan nilibing yung girlfriend niya or sa nakalagak yung bangkay ng girlfriend niya tapos doon niya ano uh, doon niya ininom yung vial of elixir na yon. Tapos nung natagpuan na lang sila, wala na siyang buhay, wala na siya ano. So hindi na siya nadala sa sa ano sa sa doktor. The father of his girlfriend was not approved kasi nga hindi nga approve yung ama, yung pamilya ng girlfriend sa kanya. And their families are worrying uh, ano, magkaaway. Talagang family feud yung ano na yun sa sa city na yon. Okay. Actually, kilala nyo tong case na to. This is the case of Romeo. <laughs> He had taken a vial of elixir that caused him self-poisoning. So, it's a documented history for us and it's a realization as well that yung mga, yung iba, a mundane or sabi nga natin, napaka-cheesy naman nung case, napaka-cheesy naman. Pero, given yung pack na yun, na mabigat yung pinagdaanan niya. Mabigat yung ano niya. Mahal na mahal niya yung tao na wala sa kanya niya. That he had the motivation to kill himself is, is somehow. Uh, so, that ends and concludes my lecture. Any questions from the group? Thank you, sir. So, uh, any, ano lang po, any question from the group will uh, set aside at least five minutes po for the question and answer before we close our webinar. Sir, ma'am, uh, any question po from the participants for this webinar? Answer, ma'am po. Ah, wala, wala. Okay, sige, sige. Anyway, um, if ever you have any questions, uh, nabigay naman po yung contact number ni Sir Son. Nandiyan po sa ating chat box. Uh, we also shared with you dyan sa chat box yung mga links po natin dito sa health service as uh, PIO. Uh, meron tayo nung last September po kasi is uh, Suicide Prevention Awareness Month. So we did five parts, limang, limang ano po yun, limang klaseng videos that is related po sa police suicides. Uh, the link is there. Uh, if you want, you can watch it, rewatch it. You can also share it with mga kapwa natin kapulisan at uh, dependents. These are things na alam ko medyo tabu sa PNP, pag-usapan. 
And in fact, uh, hindi ito masyadong napag-uusapan. Um, maraming dahilan, pero one of the reasons, uh, just like yung pong uh, reasons ng other police organizations sa ibang bansa, it's a taboo topic. Uh, hindi siya masyadong pinag-uusapan. Anyway, um, I think wala na po yata mga questions. Meron, na po, meron pa po ba? Ayan, uh, so, uh, sinen po ulit ni Sir Son yung kanyang email. If nahihiya lang po kayo na ayon yung tanongin dito during webinar, you can also uh, email him. Uh, which by the way, you can also ask us sa PSMU and PIO ng health service uh, if you have additional questions uh, related to the three topics being discussed by our guest lecturer. Uh, Ma'am Rose, I think wala na po yatang magtatanong. I don't know kung nagugutom na o nagmamadali. <laughs> Asi aras 12 na yata. Uh, if wala na po, Sir, Ma'am, uh, we would like to thank everyone. Now we are ready for the closing remarks. Ma'am Rose, I turn over the the control of the webinar to you. Okay, thank you, Ace. And now for the presentation of Certificate of Appreciation to our guest lecturer, may I call the Chief of Staff, Police Colonel Maria Nenita S. De Leon Mack, to be assisted by the Deputy Chief of SMU, Police Lieutenant Colonel Rosalina Piparinas, ma'am. Citations read, Republic of the Philippines National Police Commission, Philippine National Police Health Service, Camp Brigadier Rafael T. Crame, Quezon City. Certificate of Appreciation is presented to Mr. Son Michael M. Mariano for sharing his knowledge and expertise as a resource speaker during the lecture entitled Firecracker and Holiday-Related Poison Management via Zoom platform given this 28th day of December 2022 at the Health Service Conference Room, Camp Brigadier Rafael T. Crame, Quezon City. Signed, Police Brigadier General Jezebel D. Medina, Director, Health Service. Thank you for, thank you for inviting. Thank you, sir. And now for the closing remarks, may I call the Chief of Staff, Police Colonel Maria Nenita S. De Leon. Uh, magandang tanghali. Actually, it's 12.10. So it's a, uh, afternoon na po. Magandang hapon po. Sa lahat ng participants. May I ask how many participants do we have? At the moment, ma'am, we have 64. 64. Um, 64 po yung naka-online, pero sa mga kanya-kanya po region, um, meron po mga region na sama-sama na po sila doon sa isang account. Okay. We would like to see, makita ko sana yung yung gallery. Okay. So, para makita ko lang yung aking... Excuse me, sorry. Para makita ko lang yung aking kakausap. I would like to see yung mga nasa regional offices. Yan. Okay. So, I shall be um, delivering the closing remarks on behalf of our director, Police Brigadier General Jezebel D. Medina. Okay. To our guest lecturer, uh, Mr. Son My Michelle M. Mariano, participants and facilitators, uh, good afternoon. Si Mr. Son Mariano, sana mamit natin in person, ano? Asa na po ba siya? I have heard your lecture and um, I was actually listening. And uh, nasa asin siya? Ayun. I was actually listening, sir, sa lecture niyo po. Um, to the participants and facilitators, once again, um, magandang tanghali. And indeed, this activity would not be successful without your cooperation and participation. 
on behalf of all the, uh, the facilitators of this webinar, I would like to thank you for attending this webinar on firecrackers and holiday-related poison management. Actually, this is very timely. With the easing of the, of the restrictions because of the pandemic and the New Year's uh, season fast approaching, this is uh, very timely because um, a lot of families are now um, going to Bokawe or going to factories who are selling firecrackers. And for quite a long time, we have not been using firecrackers as part of our celebration of the new year because of the pandemic. And uh, this webinar actually, uh, our guest lecturer, is um, not just an, uh, adding uh, knowledge to what we already know about uh, firecracker poisoning, but refreshing the health service personnel of uh, what it is. The hell, uh, we have not been handling this kind of cases for over two years. So uh, discussing this right now is very timely. Maraming maraming salamat po. And also, um, you have also discussed uh, yung tungkol po sa suicide. And uh, uh, thank you very much for that. It is um, actually quite a sensitive topic sa PNP. Uh, iba po kasi ang aming training and um, PNP personnel committing suicide is uh, quite a sensitive topic to us. But it is uh, real and uh, it is happening. And we have programs for that. Uh, we have the Lusuka Isipan, not just for our personnel, but also for dependents of those who have committed and have tried to commit suicide po, sir, as well as yung ating mga uh, personnel na namatay due to operations po, yung mga uh, work-related operations. So, um, I encourage the participants of this webinar, health service personnel, to refresh your um, knowledge on that and to extend it to all our PNP personnel within your AOR because it is, <clears throat> it is, um, it is a real, um, it is an alarming um, reality sa PNP na po. So it is not just uh, civilians, kasama din po tayo. So extend po natin sa PNP personnel ang ating, ang ating kaalaman doon, ang ating programa on uh, Lusog Kaisipan, Bantay Kaisipan. Minsan, kailangan lang po may makausap sila. Yun lang po talaga. Um, a, you know, you just listen to these people. They just, they just keep them talking. And that eases their problem. And that helps. You do not have to be a psychologist, a trained psychologist, a trained nurse on that. You just have to be a police officer who cares and listens. And that would help. Yun lang po. On yung, on yung kakalimutan niya. And um, eh, tuloy ko lang po ha, nag, nag -ano na ako. I hope that the knowledge and skills you have gained from this webinar would boost your confidence in assessing and treating your patients with firecrackers-related poison intoxication incident. I would like to extend uh, the health service deepest gratitude to our guest lecturer who took time and effort to share, share his expertise on firecrackers-related poison intoxication management to the facilitators again for taking the initiative to educate our personnel and of course to the health service participants of this webinar congratulations we hope this helps you become better persons uh, better response responders in poison related incidences alam nyo po uh, medyo Bihira po kasi ang training and uh, seminars on poison-related incidences. At uh, kaya po medyo minsan, uh, medyo minsan, medyo nangakapa din on, on that. So 
kulang na lang sabihin ko maraming salamat Mr. Son talaga. <laughs> Kasi talaga na refresh mo kami. I've heard your your lecture. Na refresh mo talaga kami. We just hope we do not have cases but um I think there was this, this this will boost our alam mo alam naman nila yan eh. But refreshing what they know already gives them confidence in handling this patient. So in cases, so maraming salamat talaga. And for the participants, i-compromise na natin si Mr. Son that uh, we will continue our partnership with the National Poison Management and Control Center for further trainings related to this webinar for calendar year 2023. So sorry, hindi lang dito to, ha? <laughs> Kinokompromiso ko na po namin. At si yes, Mr. Yes, Salvation po, ay very eager sa mga ganyang ano. So, Ace, ha? Yes, ma'am. Mm -hmm. This is in line with our tagline, sir, kasi kung nasaan ang police nandun ang health service. Because we don't just wait to reach out. In this case po, kapag may nalaso na police, kanyang pamilya at sibilyan, dapat nandun ang health service. So, always remember, maraming maraming salamat po again for everyone. Always remember to stay safe healthy and well, tayo po ang mauna sa sarili natin because we cannot serve if we do not take care of ourselves. So tayo din, take care of ourselves so that we will be able to serve. God bless everyone and good afternoon once again. Maraming salamat po. Oo, to our lecturer, Mr. Mariano, sir, nakarecord yun ha. Sige <laughs> <laughs> po. Maraming maraming salamat po. Uh, okay, naman po, uh, yes, po. okay naman po ako to provide basics and advanced talks po. <laughs> well, thank you very much, sir. Kasi yaan buong Pilipinas na po ng health service ang participants natin ngayon. So, maganda po if we extend again yun sa mga susunod. Maraming salamat, sir. Yes, yes ma'am. Sige po. We uh, will await po from your... Ano, po. <laughs> Uh, hopefully di nga po dito matapos po ang ano po natin ang ating conversation <laughs> for this. <laughs> maraming salamat for invitation to to everyone po. Maraming salamat po. Thank you sir Rose. And thank you to Sir So Mariano. Thank you po and to all the participants. Maraming maraming po, sir. Thank you ma'am and sir. That ends our seminar for today.
Thank you.